What's going on guys? I'm here with my partner James and today is a very special video. We're going to be working on something that might be a little more uh, relatable to the general public out there that don't walk around with training knives or real knives with sticks, batons, so on and so forth. So today I'm actually going to be teaching you guys a very simple but very straightforward uh, close quarter impact weapon float. And so for those of you that don't know the classification of weapons, uh, an impact weapon, whether it's a long range, medium range, or close range weapon, is an object that cannot puncture. So it works off of blunt force, you can hit with it, but it will not cut through or it will not puncture through skin, clothing, target, whatever it might be. So when you're talking about a knife or you're talking about a sword, that would be an edged weapon, and of course, those have the properties of cutting through and puncturing. Um, so for close quarter, I'm going to be using a marker. And before we start the video, it's very important to understand that uh, there's kind of three classifications of weapons that I teach. There is the impact side, the edge side, and then the flexible side, like uh, the nunchucks or the sarong or something that's flexible. It could be warped around and uh, you'll probably see that in another video. But this will closely resemble a knife because of its range, because of the characteristics in which I can hold it, but it is an impact weapon. Right, So the key to Filipino martial arts weaponry is understanding that it's a system and that you can apply it in different ways uh, and it doesn't have to be specifically to the, the weapon. Like Your knife techniques don't have to be done with a knife. You could do it with a marker, a pencil, you could do it with a, a newspaper depending on, on how much you roll it. The newspaper can also act as a stick. Um, so sometimes you've got to see the similarities between the two but at the same time you also have to understand that it's a marker. This will not cut, this will not, you know, lacerate through my target, but I can use the mechanics of the knife the same way. Okay, so I'm here with my partner, and just for argument's sake, we're gonna work off of the cross. So because I, I am using this as sort of like a, a self-defense, self-protection concept, I'm not engaging first. And the way that I engage is not like a knife. I can't lacerate, I can't cut and do all those things. So essentially I'm augmenting or I'm supporting my empty hand techniques using something similar to a knife, but is within the impact world. Right, there's a lot of layers there. So off the punch here, I'm gonna be on the inside, I'm gonna use my hooking section, and I'm gonna parry this down to pass it over. Okay, so even though this is still really, really small, I can still use that to squeeze and really guide it around and be able to create a line. So the first one I'm gonna do is very simple. I pass, and I'm gonna hit towards the ribs. Now again, this does not puncture but having this amount of force concentrated into the ribs is very precise and it'll hurt. So I go bam right into it. Okay, very, very simple. I exit my way out, right? One of the key things when you're using uh, an impact weapon or, or especially with a knife, one thing that we, we teach in our system is we take our thumb and our grip and we put it on the top. So if this was the actual knife, if this was the blade here, at the bottom of the grip, it's very important in my pakal grip that I put my thumb on top so I can properly disperse the weight and my hand doesn't slip through when I place pressure. Okay, something is, especially something as small as this. Now if we go a little bit more specific, I'm gonna parry, and then I'm gonna take my left hand to free my right hand, and I'm gonna use this actual impact in places that hurt. Now I can essentially hit anywhere, but the shot I'm trying to look for, and I'll turn around so you can see this, the shot that I'm trying to look for is right at the face of the shoulder, right inside here, okay? So I'm trying to hit it where it hurts. And from here, I can essentially pass it off, start my grappling, etc., etc. In this type of flow, what I'm going to do is I'm going to assume that this left hand follows up, and I'm going to hit inside the bicep, along the forearm, inside the shoulder, whatever it is. And the way that I hit is the same way that I would on the outside. So I'm looking for like almost like a quick thrust or a snapping motion. Okay, so we do that again. I have one, two, three, four. Okay, so I'm kind of framing trying to protect my body at the same time, but I'm also trying to get into a position where I can shoot this straight in and really hit in the delicate areas, like at the meat of the bicep or the meat of the forearm or in between the shoulder. Now, once I have that done here, if I have precise aim, and I'm assuming that I have the, the possibility of, of missing, doesn't matter if you're uh, a new to, new to martial arts or you're a master or maestro and instructor, you always have to have room for error because you're only a human being, right? So. If I can work off of this, I will. If not, I'll replace it somewhere where there's a lot of meat. Okay, so I'll flip them one more time so you can see this. Start from the beginning, please. We have one, two, three, 
four. Again, if I can work from here, I will. If not, I'll go to the body because this is where the most meat is and I can work with. So I'm going to do what's called a stab to slash method. I'm going to stab it in and of course it's not going to puncture, but it will sink in. And I'm going to press that in and I'm going to rake it all the way down his body. And essentially what that's doing, if you look at my arms, I don't want to hurt James right here, but I'm pressing hard into the meat and I'm just irritating the skin and I'm just running it through. And believe me, when you do that with a lot of intent, going all the way across the body, across the collarbone, sensitive areas, it will hurt. Using the knife mechanics, but being honest and know that this isn't going to last right him. He's not going to start to bleed and it's not going to be a slash. So I can't, you know, do this kind of techniques because it's not going to hurt him. But I do know that this is a solid object. I, knew, I do know that I can disperse the weight very precisely at the tip of the marker. And most importantly, it's very common. So it's something that I can easily relate the system to. And a lot of the times when you train Filipino martial arts, for the people that are looking to apply it, they're trying to you know, apply it to everyday situations. And like I said in the beginning of the video, not everyone carries a training knife. Not everyone carries uh, a knife for self-defense or um, have, has a baton or has a stick with them. So part of the system is being able to apply the, the mechanics into different weapons of opportunity or different situations where you have to adapt. And a marker, a pen, a pencil, they're everywhere, anywhere. Um, and at the same time, you know, it's just a marker, right? So I'll show you the flow one more time. We go from the inside, we fan it down, parry, hit, hit, hit one more time if I can't work off of this, and rake it down, right? And then from there, you can follow up with your strikes, you can continue with this, or you can go into grappling. We go on the other side here. We have, on the inside, we pass it down, parry, hit, 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 and rake. All right, so it's very, very simple. And my personal preference, my idea is when I use this, I'm not trying to spend too much time. I'm letting it augment my hand, but I'm not going to, you know, go overboard and overkill. I'm still prioritizing what it is I'm trying to do, and it's to protect myself. So if I feel confident that I can engage uh, with the marker or, or without the marker against James, I will. If it's deemed necessary, if it's deemed right, I guess. Um, but I'm not going to be, you know, Mr. Morality here and tell you what's right and what's wrong. Um, or... I'm going to use it to create an opening for me to escape, for me to run, for me to get the heck out of there. And right, that's okay too. So um, that's, that's kind of an easy close quarter impact. Now this can also be uh, used as like a flashlight. They, they sell a lot of tactical flashlights out there. Um, even trainer knives will do the same, the same damage, right? Um, and, and you know, with the flashlight, you can play around with it because it is a flashlight. You can, you know, flash it in their face and blind them. So sometimes looking at the, the facilitator, quote unquote weapon and using it with mechanics that you understand but also respecting it for what it is will often let you see the other side of how you can apply Kali or, or Filipino martial arts in everyday weapons. Um, so if you guys are going to practice this, make sure that you practice it with a training partner. Make sure you're doing it safely. Um, I tell my students all the time, if I'm teaching you how to use a marker, don't go, don't go to, your, to your, your friend and be like, hey, watch this. Let me show you what I can do with this marker, right? Obviously, you have to have the responsibility and the maturity to be training um, a, a weapon-oriented application into everyday weapons. And so I hope you guys keep that in mind. If you guys like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, I'll catch you guys later.